Good morning, everybody. Today we're going to be talking about equations and their solutions. So let's go ahead and get started. Our goal is to be able to write equations for vertical and horizontal lines. So first we're going to start up with this warm up and it says which one does not belong. So out of these four, A, B, C, and D, which one do you think does not belong? Why do you think it does not belong? Okay, so if you picked A, you might have said, hey, those ones are going down and these other ones are going up. So maybe that's why A doesn't belong. For B, you might have said, hey, they're going up and they look like they're going to crash into each other. So maybe that's why B doesn't belong. You might have said C because they are horizontal lines. All the other ones are diagonal lines. And you might have said D because those are the closest lines together and they're parallel. So whichever you one pick, whichever one you picked is fine. Let's take a look at what these lines look like. So for this first one, it says, which equations make the most sense for all of these points with a y coordinate of negative four. So if you look over here, we have a point at negative four, and then we have a point at negative four, and a point of negative four, and a point of negative four. Your x values are different, but all of your y values are negative four. So what do you think this equation is? Do you think it is x equals negative four? Or do you think it is a y equals negative four? This one is actually y equals negative four. The reason because if I were to write all of these points out, this point right here is negative four, negative four. This point is negative three, negative four. This point is two, negative four, and this point is five, negative four. If you notice, all of my y's are negative four. So if I were to write this as an equation, I would say y equals negative four. Let's try another one. Which equation makes the most sense if all of my x coordinates are three. X equals three, Y equals three X, Y equals three, or X plus Y equals three. All of my X values are three. This whole line right here, this whole line of points, if I were to write that as an equation, it would be x equals three because all of my x values are three. So I want you to notice how in the first equation, y equals negative four, there was no x. And in the second equation, x equals three, there was no y. And the reason for this is because they are vertical and horizontal lines. So let me show you what that looks like. So this line is a vertical line. This line is our horizontal line. So it goes through all of those points. So anytime you have a horizontal or a vertical line, you're only going to have one variable in your equation. So y equals negative four or x equals three. Okay, so the next question says, would the line of x equals negative two be horizontal or vertical? Okay, so what would that look like? we would have points for x equals negative two, x equals negative two, negative two, negative two, negative two, negative two. And if I connect all of those, we would get a vertical line.
Okay, um, would the line y equals five be horizontal or vertical? What do you guys think? So let's see, let's put some points. Y equals five, y equals five, y equals five, y equals five. Again, if I connect to these, ah, we would get a horizontal line. And let's try one more. So it says here is a rectangle with vertices 2 comma 1, 5 comma 1, 5 comma 3, and 2 comma 3. For each of the four sides of the rectangle, write an equation for a line containing the side. Okay, so we'll go one by one. For the top. Okay, for the top of this, what would this line look like? Okay. For the bottom, what would this line look like? For the right side, what would this line look like? And for the left side, what would this line look like? So something that might help us better figure these out is to label all of my numbers. So we're going to use these numbers. So that's a one, that's a two, that's a three, that's a four. This is a one, that's a two, that's a three, that's a four. That's a five. Okay, so for the top, we are looking at y. So this is our, we'll label our axes as well. That's our x. This is our y. All of these are y numbers. So we would say y equals three. For the bottom, it's still on the y, but now we are looking at one. So y equals one. For the right side, we are looking at our x, and all of our x's are 5, so we would say x equals 5. And the left side, we are still looking at our x's, and this time, our x's are 2. So now, we have equations for this whole rectangle. Okay, our next idea are solutions. So a solution is anything that will make an equation true. So apples and oranges. At the corner produce market, apples cost $1 each and oranges cost $2 each. So how much does an apple cost? Good, $1. And how much does an orange cost? Good, $2. So now we're gonna find the cost if they were to buy this. So six apples and each apple is a dollar. And then three oranges and each orange is $2. So six times one is six, three times two is six, and then we do six plus six. So this will be a total of $12. How much would four apples and four oranges cost? Well, let's see, we would do four times one, which is four, and then four times the $2, which is eight. So we would do four plus eight, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. This is also $12. Okay, let's try five apples. So five apples at $1 each, is five dollars. Four oranges at two dollars each is eight. So five plus eight is thirteen. And then what do you think? If I buy eight apples and two oranges, how much would that cost? Let's check. So eight times one and two times two so we would do eight plus four, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 
So twelve dollars. So yay, we got them all right. Twelve, twelve, thirteen, and twelve. Here's another problem. It says Kyle has ten dollars to spend at the produce market. If apples are a dollar each and oranges are two dollars each, can he buy seven apples and two oranges? Okay, so he has ten dollars to spend. So he has Kyle has ten dollars. And then he said apples are a dollar. And then we said oranges are two dollars. Can he buy seven apples and two oranges? Yes or no? What do you think? Let's check. So seven apples would be $7, and two oranges would be $4. Seven plus four, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 is 11 dollars, and he only has 10 dollars. So no, he would not be able to. He would be a dollar short. Um, so now that we know he cannot do that, what is a combination of apples and oranges that he could buy? So give me one combination of apples and oranges. How many apples and how many oranges? So there's actually a lot of combinations. Any of these would work. Zero apples and five oranges, two apples, four oranges, four apples, three oranges, and so on. So any of these are correct answers. Now it says use two variables of A and O to write an equation that represents the combinations of apples and oranges that he can buy. So that means A is going to be apples and O is going to be oranges. So what would that look like? That means my apples, they cost $1. So it would be 1A plus the $2 for the oranges means he can spend $10. So we can write the equation like this, or if you want, you can get rid of the one and just leave it as A. Okay, here is a riddle. It says you have two numbers if you double the first number and add it to the second number, the sum is 10. Okay, I'm gonna read that again. If you have two numbers, if you double the first number and add it to the second number, the sum is 10. Do you think you can write that as an equation? Let's try to dissect that. So it says, if you double the first number, so that means there are how many of the first number? There are two. So two of our first number, and then it says add, so we're gonna put a plus sign, to the second number. So second number is a different variable. And the sum, which means equals 10. Ta-da, we did it. So it wasn't too, too hard of a riddle. Now that we figured out this riddle, we can see what numbers work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out which ones work. So we tried, if we plug in one, that means eight would go here. If we plug in two, so if we have two X's, we get two times two 
plus something equals 10. So 4 plus something equals 10. Okay, so that would be 6. Okay, let's try the next one. 3. 2 times 3 plus something equals 10. Well, we know 2 times 3 is 6. So 6 plus something equals 10. That would be 4. Okay, 4. So we see a pattern. It goes 8, 6, 4. What do you think the next number is going to be? It would be 2. So each time we go up, it decreases by two. So decrease and decrease. Decrease by two. Decrease by two. Decrease by two. And if we kept going, decrease by two. So this would be able to tell us these are our combinations that work for our riddle. And what is a solution? A solution in, is anything that is on this line. So any number on this line is a solution. Any number that is not on this line is not a solution. So it says, um, what is one pair of numbers that is a solution to this equation? So that is on this line. Okay, now what is one pair of numbers that is not a solution to this equation? So what is a point that is not on this line? Nice, so solutions are precisely the point on the line and no more. A solution to an equation with two variables is an ordered pair that makes it true. If you're looking at a graph, it is all the points on that line. So what if we don't have a graph, then what do we do? So what we do is we take our points and we put them into our equation. So let's try it. It says, which of the following coordinates make this equation true? So let's do one together. So it says a point a is 12 comma zero. So we're going to take these, our x and our y, we're going to substitute them in. So my x is 12 minus nine times my y is zero equals 12. Okay, now we have to see if this is true or false. So nine times zero is zero. And then 12 minus zero is 12. So this is a true statement. So we say, yay. This one is a solution. Now let's try B. B says my X is zero and my Y is 12. So that means zero minus nine times 12 equals 12. And then nine times 12 is 108 and then it says 0 minus 108 equals 12 there's no way that's true okay what about c go ahead and try c pause and what about d after doing the math c would be correct and D would also be correct. So what are your big ideas for today? We wanted to know that horizontal and vertical lines only have one variable. So it's going to be X equals a number or it's going to be Y equals a number. And then solutions to a linear equation is a pair of values that makes an equation true. So it's your X and Y that make your equation true. And if you have a graph, it's anything that's on that line. If you don't have a graph, 
then you take your numbers and you substitute them into your equation. And if you get a true statement, then it is a solution. If you get a false statement, it is not a solution. And then any points that are not on a line are not the solution. So what were our goals to talk about equations and positive and negative slopes? We did that. We talked about vertical and horizontal lines and what those look like. We did that. And then talking about solutions to equations. Yay, we did it. Okay, so what should you do now? Complete assignment. 8.3.11-12 practice problems on edge elastic and then if you guys ever get stuck you can always click the check button or check answer button and if you don't get a 70 percent or above you can go ahead and retake that assignment so you can get a better score all right if you guys have any questions feel free to email me have a great day bye